housing market is going to crash in 2022? Um, stay tuned to find out our predictions. So we're going to tell you what's going to happen, at least according to us. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Welcome back to our channel. If you're looking for house in Greenville, North Carolina, please comment. We'll love to help you into a house. And please like and subscribe to our channel. And then today we wanted to talk about basically continuing expectation about increasing the inflation, of course. Right. And will the market crash? So let's start with our various data. So economic data is ex show coming in and saying that we're going to increase the expectation of inflation is going to continue into 2022, which exactly. means that uh, the consumer price index is currently 6.2. Um, and this is up from October 21. Um, so again, if CPI is already up, CPI is continuing to increase, what does this mean? It means inflation is high right now. What does and, that mean? And let's give us some historical, uh, basically, point of view. That if you compare this one, we didn't have this inflation since 1990. That's correct? Mm -hmm. And if you compare it with the 1970s, we'll say that 1970s were around 7% inflation or mm -hmm. CPI. And now we are dealing with 6.2. Therefore, we are still close and nobody knew about this. Um, also, I want to mention continually, we do have more supply chain issues that are happening and ongoing labor shortages. So, I mean, Barbies right now are like $100 for the ones my kids want for Christmas, and that's just one thing. So, supply issues are across the board. We're talking doors, windows, not just lumber. So, everything they need to make a house. Therefore, even the rising employment, bringing the yes. uh, people to work for you on the construction also is another hassle that nobody wants to work. Or, or they want to get paid more. They so want to get they, paid more. They, they want to get paid more because inflation is real. Exactly. And this is also on the top of that. And let's do uh, some economy, basically, prediction uh, about the personal consumption and expenditure. No? Okay, so it is again expected to be higher. It's been higher, and it is the what does we mean by personal expenditures? People are spending more money. Why? Because there's money is now cheaper. So if money is now cheaper, people are buying stuff. But it also means that our prices are increasing, and there are people taking advantage of this, of course. But there's also real supply issues. So what else? And also, Federal Reserve actually predicted that expected we had actually four point. Uh, nine percent, uh, four point four percent in the uh, fourth quarter of the 2021, which instead we had four point nine percent, which is even higher than it's supposed to be. Oh, and another thing we want to mention in terms of housing is that the infrastructure bill did pass Congress, which is going to bring five hundred and fifty billion dollars of spending for roads bridges, public transportation, and housing, which is going to give us some growth in the economy for the area in which are, we are just having a supply issue altogether and people just can't get into their first homes. Anything? Which this gives us, uh, for the people, more growth and mm -hmm. a steady income, hopefully. So hopefully it starts stabilizing. And it starts st stabilizing, as my wife said. Yes and helps the economy more and maybe we fight some of those challenges that are going to come on our way. Okay, because another fact we have to talk about is that home sales um, have continued to rise. We are at a 2.9% in the past 12 months, which is up a lot. So what does that mean? Do we expect a slowdown? Hopefully at least stabilization would be best for everybody because stable growth and stable economy is always stable and stable jobs, stable is good. What else? Therefore, basically, uh, when the COVID hit, nobody know that the houses is gonna go high. No, even the Zillow, they lost billions of dollars, mm -hmm. basically based on the data mining that they did on the housing market. But boy, it hit us very bad. If you look at the January uh, 2019 and compare it to the January 2020, uh, September actually 2021, we have almost 20%, 19.5% of the uh, gross or raise of the housing, no? Right. Which was actually, we didn't see this data since 2012. 
No? Uh, correct. After the 2008 bu bubble of the real estate. Mm -hmm. And another thing we need to bring in is the pandemic has taught us that we love single family homes. People have moved into the suburbs and this is one of the most competitive markets out there is people want space in their yard. They want a house and they want to be kind of left alone because who knows what's going to happen in the future for anything else. So this has kind of pushed a lot of people out of the cities and looking more to the suburbs. Exactly. Therefore, many people, young people that they had the job now, they can work home, they try to say as a first time home buyer, hit the market. And that's why the supply issue comes, no? Mm -hmm. Because we need to provide for that amount of people, the millennial, as a first time home buyer, mm -hmm. enough supply. Right, and it's just made the housing market so, so competitive. Um, but I also want to mention that inflation is now copped up as well. And when we have inflation and inflationary pressure and all the prices are increasing, that's also going towards houses. So it doesn't mean that you're going to get a mansion for $150,000. That's not what we mean here. But we do mean that inflation is a real thing. And the most stable thing you can do is make sure that your rent and your mortgage is a stable number. So it never changes once you're in a house unless you reconfirm interest rates are still super low so having super low interest rates right now coupled with inflationary pressure means that you want to have something stable in your life and a mortgage is something that is going to stay the same for 30 years which means you never have to worry about what the rent is going to be or anything else and still you should consider that there is a fierce competition Absolutely. meanwhile we were talking about all these factors Absolutely. and still we don't have enough house and the buyers actually, they don't have uh, basically time to even think about it or get the pre-approval on all those fun things that the, they do. Because the house they wanted is just gone already. Um, and again, with interest rates, I wanna just put there, the interest rates are going to go increase because the government's gonna to wanna to fight inflation. If they fight inflation, one of the things they do is they increase the interest rate, which means your mortgage price is now going to be a higher interest. So you're paying more for your interest and less for a house. Anything else? Well, I just wanted to add that also uh, when you were talking about that $500 billion uh, that we were talking about, maybe this oh, with, sorry, Biden for Biden, the Biden, 50? Yeah. yes, uh, that also with what we were talking about, maybe gives a little bit room to the buyer that they can't breathe because now they are just in this uh, race that can I get this house because the the second that they sure. want to think, think about it, somebody else is going to put the offer on those houses. Okay, so let's talk about predictions from other people. Realtor.com, Redfin, CoreLogic, they're all guessing that growth rate is going to stabilize between 25 to 3%. Is that correct? Well, am I getting yes. the numbers right? And what about the others? Um, I think Freddie Mac and Fannie Mac are in the 7.0% of increase. They're more bullish on the market, so they're going to, they're predicting that interest rates are going to continue to grow. I mean, not interest rate, inflation is going to continue. So they are more bullish on that one. Let's talk about some numbers, guys, because yeah. I'm a number guy yes, and I like to guy. talk about number. Therefore, based on the realtor.com and zillow.com, they said that right now we have the interest rate 2.7%, which if you wanted to bring it in the APR scale, is going to be around three to 3.1% 3 uh, per year, no? The annual interest mm -hmm. rate. And let's say according to their prediction, this is gonna be around 3.6% by the three quarter of the 2022. And let's not go to the half a million or million dollars or how, just go with the average in our market 250, no? For example, for the Greenville market. Mm -hmm. If you look at this percentage, 3.1% for APR versus 36 and basically calculate for the 3% down payment and you're looking at 1100 to 1150 for 3.1% for over the 30 years of term versus uh, if you're looking at 3.6 is around 1240. Therefore, if you do all this calculation and then you compare, you are talking about 38,000 to 40,000 more money that you should put that you can pay off your lender or your bank for the house that you are purchasing. Therefore, you will see that the number you're thinking about, oh, is this is like a half a percent, it shouldn't be that much. But when you're looking at the long term, it's gonna be a big number. Oh, but we need to talk about supply shortages. And a lot of people like to blame the rising prices of homes on the lumber shortage, but that's not necessarily true. Lumber is back, but we still have door issues, window issues, 
granite counter crop issues, just you name it, issues are happening throughout the supply chain. It is not just lumber. So people just think, oh, lumber is good. We're good to get a house. That's not necessarily true anymore. Um, inflation is actually here and prices are gone and going up, up, up. And then let's give you also uh, numbers about the lumber, no? Yes. If you look at the January uh, 2017 and January 2020, uh, January 20 and January 2021, we were looking at the 1,000 board uh, for $375, guys. And then if you look at it for January 2020 and 2021, we're looking at 1550. Therefore, you see that we have a gross almost 412%, which is incredibly crazy. Um, another thing I want to mention with home builders and stuff like this is we have been underbuilt since the tw since the market crash in 2008. We were not building homes at the same pace because the more we weren't giving away mortgages cheap and they caused a pressure. So there was a pressure to not build homes, but now that we have a problem, there's a real shortage out there. So America is absolutely underbuilt. You want to give numbers with this? Yeah, for sure. For example, the way that the mar U.S. market housing was working is for those millennials that they wanted to purchase, they and were Gen predicting... Z. And Gen Z, don't forget the Gen Zers. And <laughs> also, it was around 4 million houses, no? Therefore, if we uh, cut back mm -hmm. these basically producing the houses by the builders to, for example, 2.5 or 1.5 million, what's gonna happen? Um, so you want our predictions now? Yes. Okay, so what we think is that, okay, this is just us. We're putting on our, we're using our crystal ball right now that we don't actually own. But so don't take anything we're going to say seriously because we are not connected to any other higher power except these numbers that we've thrown at you. So um, with that, I can say that we are probably looking at prices are going to stabilize. That does not mean that prices go down. It means that they stabilize. So the houses are not going to decrease or decelerate and there's no crazy deal that's going to happen. Do I think the market is going to crash? No. Do I think that we are going to get into more stable area? Yes, because home building needs to come back. Um, we are building stronger. I am going to look at new more home construction later today and I was there this morning. So um, home new homes are really happening. And so this should hopefully put some ease on the pressure, which would then calm the market down so buyers have breathing room and sellers are also can figure out what their home is actually worth. Do I think anything is going to crash and burn? No. What about you? Do you have any crazy predictions? Put well, I think as you said, um, it, it's supposed to be more stable i think so and it's going to be a lower increase of the uh, price because one of them that we were talking about interest rate is going to go high Absolutely. therefore it is going to put a pressure on the uh, appreciation instead of 19.5 is going to go much more lower that they said the realtor.com zillow.com they said is around 2.5 to 3.5 percent ish and but let's not forget as my wife said also all of this shortage labor and uh, all the issues that we had for the materials for the uh, also uh, building a new uh, construction garage door. is not gonna fix actually makes the market more competitive but hopefully this is gonna be more steady you that helps to buy it that then can breathe uh, that they have more time that they can decide for them and their loved ones. So let us know your thoughts. I'd love to hear the comments. I love talking about markets and data and analysis and giving crazy predictions for 2022. So tell us what your thoughts is. Um, and don't always just throw 2008 at us. We want more facts and data. So hit us with those facts, with those comments. We love it. And if you found this uh, information valuable, please subscribe to the channel. We have lots of calls from the people that they call us, they wanted to move. Uh, even you send us uh, smoke signals. We are here we, for you. We got your bag and we are here to help you. And I love Greenville, North Carolina. If you are not from here like me, because I talk fast, um, it's okay. We love helping people here around here. So love it. Talk to you soon.